Any questions, make it quick. Yes, no, Bismillah. Yes, sir. Fadal. You mentioned about uh, correcting oneself and correcting others. Uh, and you have to correct oneself first. But even if you don't correct oneself first, you still have to correct others. Is there any uh, related dalil for it? Or? Related dalil? Yeah. Now, the dalil, akhi, is that you were commanded to enjoy what is good and forbid what is evil. Yani the Prophet ﷺ said, the brother was asking, because people tell me to repeat the question. He was asking that, uh, I said that you correct yourself, then you correct others. But even if you fail in correcting yourself, you must still correct others. Now the ulama have differed. But the position which I found to be very powerful and strong is that even if you fail in correcting yourself, you still have to correct others. Why? Because we have two obligations. If you do have two obligations and you fail in fulfilling one, do you abandon the other? Do you abandon the other? Do you, you do the other. If you have two things you're supposed to do, you fail to do one, you say, okay, I'm going to leave the other one also. No, say, get one at least. So there's an obligation for yourself and there's an obligation towards the people. If you fail in rectifying yourself, don't fail in also rectifying the people, otherwise it will be double, double failure. Now yes, there are ayat which may suggest otherwise. أَتَقْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْرُونَ الْكِتَابِ The ulama understood these two principles in different ways. The conclusion, because this requires a lecture, it's very technical. The conclusion is that based on the general narration, أخي, that if you see munkar, you change it. So now you have to change what you see in other people. What happens between you is between you and Allah. But concerning the Muslims, they have the right of ad dinu and nasiha. Fair enough? I hope that makes sense, inshallah. Can I, can I just follow up question? Yes. How is that effective, though, if, if uh, you're not doing what you're supposed to do and you're telling somebody to, for example, if you're not praying and you see somebody's not praying, and you will correct them. If you're not correcting yourself, how effective is that? Uh, the, the effectiveness is with Allah. You, yani, you, that you have done your job. He may listen to you and go pray. And this, by the way, parents do this all the time. They do something wrong, and when the child doesn't say, don't do this, and he will not do it sometimes. He will listen to you sometimes, even though you're doing it yourself. So this happens. Your job is to do it. Now, it doesn't mean that this becomes our way of life. That's why I made that comment, that we don't just follow, oh, disobey Allah all the way, and then we tell the people to do everything. No, no, no. We make that effort. But in case you failed on yourself, don't fail with others as well. Right. Uh, are ladies allowed to wear jeans? It depends on what you mean. If you mean at home, some of the ulama say yes, and some of them say no, because they say pants is from the dress code of men. Say what? Okay? Some of them say there's flexibility, you may wear it, but wearing jeans while going out, no. Wearing jeans under a jilbab, so that every time you walk, your leg, your leg pull, you know, uh, comes out, and, and, and the people can see the leg with the jeans? No. No. Say, but brother, you know, blah, blah, blah. I say, bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> Find a solution. Wear a long skirt, buy something, wear a long jilbab, figure it out. But you cannot, you cannot walk and every time you walk, your leg comes out with a leg. See leg with shoes and sometimes skin? No. Sisters in Islam. If you were in this condition now, you know, when you walk out, walk slowly, and next time just, you know, make sure you do what is right. Can a woman wear uh, ornaments such as rings, bracelets, etc., when going out? No. <coughs> Absolutely not. Because this is part of the zina. This is part of the tabarruj, which Allah Azza wa Jal forbade. Remain at home and do not adorn yourself as the way of the early days of ignorance. So no, you cannot wear a ring, a bracelet, a necklace, anything which looks attractive. If you go back to our lecture, is this sister going to Jannah? We explained, and some of the ladies didn't like it, but I'm still going to say it, you're supposed to look boring. That's what it is, sister. That's the truth of the matter. I'm being as blunt as I can be. Your job is to look boring in front of strangers. At home, look like a princess, like a queen, like the beauty pageant. That's your business at home. Outside, boring. If someone sees something which calls them to look again, you have failed in your hijab. Period. If you have something 
that makes a man wants to take a second look at you, you have failed in your hijab. If you've done your job and he looks at you 20 times, you are not sinful, he's sinful. But if you're inviting indirectly, then you become, you share the sin. It's not worth it. Look boring and go to Jannah. Then you'll have castles and you can wear whatever you like over there. Salam alaikum wa alaikum salam. At the Haram in Mecca, one security was smoking and blew the smoke, maybe accidentally in my face. I told him Haram to smoke. Uh, he counter attacked by saying, Where is your niqab? Should I have said anything to him? Yes. Yes, you should have said that. That's the same thing they did to you as they did to me. Say, yani, if, I, if I put on the niqab, will you stop smoking? Is it about the niqab? Here. Throw away the cigarette. See if he's going to do it. These are followers of desires. So there's no relation between them. And you can tell him, FYI, most of the madahib are of the opinion that you don't have to cover the face. It is not the majority opinion. Okay? The majority opinion is that the sister doesn't have to cover her face. We recommend it, we love it, it's a sunnah, she's rewarded, no doubt. But is it an obligation? As far as I'm concerned, no. As far as many of the ulama are concerned, no. So you're not doing anything wrong per se for him to say that you wear the niqab. You're doing something which Islam has allowed. Find me now who said that smoking is halal among a scholar. You won't. I'll quote a alim of a madhab who says that I can show my face. You find me a alim of a madhab that says you can smoke. You can't do it. But anyways, of course, time doesn't allow you to go back and forth. And these kind of people, you bring a man to do the job on your behalf. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh It is stated in the hadith that it is haram for men to wear their trousers under the ankle only if they do it to show that they are proud Does this mean that men who are not proud are allowed to wear their trousers under the ankle? No, no, no No, 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 no The one who wears his pants below the ankles has the following لا ينظر الله إليه يوم القيامة ولا يكلمه ولا يزكيه ولا ولا ينظر إليه وله عذاب أليم. Five things for the one who does it out of pride. Usually the cool hip hop dudes or time out or others. Anyone who by putting his pants down thinks now I'm a super special. You know I'm nice guy. I'm hot cool. Whatever terms they use today. This one, Allah will not speak to him on the day of judgment. Allah will not look at him. Allah will not purify him. And Allah will have a severe punishment prepared for him. The one who does it out of pride. If you don't do it out of pride, then you will get the hellfire only without the other four punishments. مَا أَسْفَلَ مِنَ الْكَعْبَيْنِ مِنَ الْإِزَارِ فَفِي النَّارِ حَدِيثِ الزَّبُخَارِ Whatever below the garment, whatever below the ankles of the garment is in the fire. There's no, look, go back to the lecture. I'm not going to give the lecture again because it's not for everyone else. The lecture is on YouTube, on DVD, available. It, hell equals garment. That's the title of the lecture. Yani, will hell send, will a garment send you to hell? You see the many evidences concerning this particular ruling. You cannot keep your pants below the ankles, period. Whether out of pride or without pride. And vice versa for the sisters. You cannot keep your jilbab above your ankles. You better put that thing down. Nowadays we're going, you know, we're confused. Many women are confused. The sister is the one walking with the jilbab above the ankles and her husband's pants are dragging 20 feet behind him. Misconceptions about Islam. Is it about this? No. What? No. Let Ali. Continue. Like Ali, what's up? No, 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 no. This is some Lebanese. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Stop the phone, please. Nowadays, the Palestinians are facing wars and need help. Uh, as Muslims, is it a must to help them? <coughs> Zakah? Sure. Whoever has the means to help Muslims, you don't need to ask that question. Just go back to the ayah. Al mu'minu wal mu'minun wal mu'minat. Ba'adhum awliya wa ba'ad. This is our job. Everyone helps according to ability. Some people got falus, some people got skills, some people got uh, information. Everyone does what he can. Muslims in Palestine, Muslims in Afghanistan, Muslims in Pakistan, it doesn't matter. Any Muslim, anyone on earth has a 
right over us. We have to do something for them. And if we're unable because of the, you know, the, the chains around us, then we remember them and we, you know, we wish goodness for them and we love them for because they're brothers in faith. But whoever is able to do more, you don't need to ask me or ask any other person concerning this matter. I answered this already. <coughs> Yes. What can you say for the Muslims who say to the non-Muslims in Merry Christmas? Something to say. I know it's hard. Yeah. Uh, we were speaking, I was speaking with the brother concerning this. He said the one who says to a kafir, happy holidays, concerning that, he has committed a sin worse than fornication, worse than drinking alcohol, worse than killing an innocent soul. In fact, he has engaged in an act of disbelief, but we will not declare disbelief on him. Because by saying happy holidays, you have said congratulations on your disbelief in Allah. That's the summary. As if you say to them, your belief God was born on the 25th of December, happy holidays, congratulations. I like it. That's what you're doing. And we mentioned in the lecture, can I celebrate this? The answer of one of the du'at who said that when you say Merry Christmas or Happy Hanukkah or any other batikh that they invent, you really say, you really say, you really say Happy Devil's Day. Because it's not from Allah. If it's not from Allah, it's from the Shaitan. If it's from the Shaitan and you say you're accepting it, then you're saying Happy Satan's Day. No such thing. You have to be brave. You say, but my whole family say, I don't care about your whole family. Your relationship is with Allah, with Allah. You can tell them, guys, one of the easy outlets, one of the easy outlets say, listen, don't you like sincerity? When I wish something, shouldn't it come from my heart? I don't believe in this. I don't want to be fake tell you Merry Christmas. I don't believe in it. Okay? Either I say something genuine, or as a person who respects, my, I respect myself, I don't give these fake, empty statements. Either I'm genuine, and the substance of my speech or I remain silent, they will respect you. They will respect you far more than saying to them what you don't believe. Yes? They will come back to you, we don't believe in aid, but we'll tell you aid Mubarak. They say this is your lenience in your religion. That's your religion. We Muslims are very, very careful about what Allah said and how we act according to it. I'm sorry to tell you, you know, of course you try to be nice, but tell them how many of the things which God asks you to do are you doing? If they're Christians, say, are you circumcised? Maybe that's not the best question you can ask a man. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, do you, do you pray three times a day, as it mentioned, Jesus praying in the Bible? Do you make wudu as Jesus did in the Bible? Do you make sujood as people, uh, Jesus did in the Bible? No. Say, how come you left all of these things that Jesus did, and now you're catching me on Merry Christmas, which Jesus never did either. <clears throat> so, you, you turn the tables around. I just told you the best diplomatical way is to say I am a, I try to be a genuine person when I wish something someone it either comes from my heart or it doesn't come I honestly don't believe Jesus was born on the 25th of December when they prove it to me that we can have a discussion then I don't believe it Do you want me to give you fake statements do you like for me to lie to you I'm not gonna lie to you if you want me to lie to you, there's a problem, you know, in what you want. That's like someone, you know, telling someone, say you love me, but I don't love you. And I don't want to say I love you when I don't love you because I'll be lying to you. Say Muslims are not allowed to lie. We don't lie. If I say Merry Christmas, I'm lying because I don't believe this is a Merry Christmas at all. You see what I'm saying? So because my religion doesn't allow me to lie and I try to be genuine, I will not say anything. Oh, Muslims are doing just in the reciprocation because they are greeting for Eid and all these things. So when this comes, so they are just that because if they don't do this is a, uh, the best guidance is the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If this was going to be effective in Dawah, believe me, it would have been taught to us in the Quran and the Sunnah. When we have learned the opposite of that, this can never be effective. And believe me, you may say that trying to please them, thinking you're going to bring him closer to Islam, all this will make them do is feel more proud and prideful about their religion and get further away from Islam and your level of respect will drop down